Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of The Horrible Influence. Yeah, yeah. It is, uh, it's another Monday, another wonderful Monday. I get to record this week from another hotel room, this time out of the wonderful Sheboygan, Wisconsin. <laughs> right next to the devil's asshole. I am not Turns jealous out. at all. I'm pretty jealous of that tree. It's looking it's pretty dead. fancy. It's yeah, it it dead. definitely died. If the wind blows through the house, it will um, turn into a pile of dust and immediately catch on fire. <laughs> it's a good thing you have it wrapped in lights. Yes, and uh, right in front of the heater. <laughs> Winning. Tiger's blood. Tiger's blood and AIDS. Turns out Tiger's blood has AIDS. <laughs> Uh, how'd your uh, how'd your week go so far? Um, uh, good. We went to a show on Saturday and saw a band called Wolf Alice. They're like a, I don't know, rock and roll band with a chick lead singer. It was all right. Mm. Melissa digs them. They uh, super death metal or are they more? Oh no, they're like um, uh, what could I more city. Uh, radio, like radio rock. Oh, okay. Maybe a little bit Alanis Morissette-esque-ish. Good. Ness? I'd probably dig them. Ingley? Yeah, you might. There's some. They have some good jams. Uh, their their fan base consists of uh, 15-year-olds who have never been to a concert before in their lives and 40-year-olds who go to one show per year. So that's real fucking annoying because they just get time traveling drunk and then just start like fucking running into everybody so it feels like you're at a circle pit at slayer but you're just standing at a show for <laughs> paramore fantastic yeah what's was, the deal with the concerts lately being like the last one we went to was almost that exact demographic where did we go um oh they were real good they weren't. It was the guy that played by himself. Mystery and Skulls? Then, and Cherub? Yeah, that was it. Oh, okay. I was like mostly kids, like, except for Pitbull. I got to show except that. For Pitbull. I got to show that picture to somebody the other day because they were talking about meeting somebody that looked like Pitbull. And then I showed them like, a the picture of as like, much yeah. like Pitbull as Pitbull. <laughs> <laughs> they thought it was because they didn't hear exactly what I said the first time. They're like, holy shit. When did you meet Pitbull? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. no my was, my Pitbull sure doppelganger him. just looks more like Pitbull than your Pitbull doppelganger. <laughs> There's so many of them. <laughs> Not a hard look to pull off as it turns no, out. No, yeah, that one's real easy. <laughs> Everybody that even had a slight resemblance to that guy threw on a an Armani knockoff suit and threw some sunglasses on. <laughs> yeah, <went> golden. Out, <laughs> got it, it. Nailed it. Cosplay successful. <laughs> Oh man, um, how was the uh, the hockey game? Hockey game was was hockey. Uh, that's my first one. I've never been to in minor league or whatever they're called or any game before that. So this was right out the gate NHL. Nice. Um, it it was cool. I don't know if I followed enough to. I constantly would just sit there and go, "Well, why are they stopping now?" Like that's what I got out of the NFL is that they just don't play very long. So they play for a minute or two, and then the ref stops it and makes them go back to the other side because they didn't. Like icing or some shit. They yeah, they didn't play right. Yeah. I was like, well, okay. <laughs> uh, there wasn't any fights, which was right up my alley for that because that was my argument about them not being a sport. Yeah. So there wasn't a single fight. Um the Canucks played without a goalie for the last period, and I don't understand what the goal was, but it just meant that the Blackhawks got three extra goals. Holy fuck, really? Yeah, it was 1-0. Um, then the Canucks scored, but they didn't score because they're in Chicago, so I guess you have to score twice to score once. <laughs> I don't really like he hit it in and the, everybody went to cheer 
and the goal of the referee blew the whistle and gave the hands for no goal, which I don't see how that's a possibility because the little black puck was inside the net. And then he said that he was inside the paint when he shot it. And I guess if you get too close to the goalie, you make it too hard for him. So you can't score that way. But then they went to show the replay, and he's for sure like a foot outside of it. He's not even close to the paint. And as soon as he goes to shoot it and it shows that he's outside of the paint, they just cut the feed. That's hilarious. And they just kept on. I was like, do you not get to, like, call that? And they were just <laughs> like, no. And I was like, oh, so it's baseball in the 1920s. You just got to <laughs> yeah. pay the this refs off to win. Sports without cameras again. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, they show it on the on the mega screen up there. And the guy, they go, oh, yeah, you can see right here he's in the paint. And the guy goes back to hit the puck. And he's way outside, and he hits the puck, and then the screen just turned off. And I was like, oh, so we're just – do not look at the man behind the mask. Like, <laughs> there's nothing to see here. So it was interesting. I uh, I did enjoy myself. It was a lot of fun. I got uh, – I drank a bunch of $10 beers. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, so that was cool. And, and we went out uh, – we went to a badass little brew pub with Shane and Dylan. Oh, no shit. Shane go to the game also? Yep. Yeah, we all went. And they were decked out in Blackhawks gear, and we were in our ugly Canuck sweaters. <laughs> Super fucking ugly. Yeah. <laughs> that Facebook picture is creepy as shit. Oh. Uh, they were the hit of the place. We got more people stopped, mo- mostly positive. People were just like, I love those sweaters. That's crazy. But then if you you got the occasional guy that was... I, oh, yeah, that's an ugly fucking sweater because fuck the Canucks. And I was like, oh, I, I don't watch ice soccer, so this doesn't, you're not <laughs> insulting me. <laughs> <laughs> there was a Blackhawks fan standing next to me while I was getting beer, and this guy started yelling at me for my shirt. And he was like, yeah, that's an ugly fucking sweater. And the guy goes, the Blackhawks fan was like, not as ugly as your fucking wife. And I was just like, Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, that I guess like last time Mel went and they won, there was people like spitting on her and threatening to stab her when she left. I was like, this is the best. That's why I don't should. like fucking sports, yeah. man. Because football, I'd, football fans are the same fucking way. Yeah, kind of. Maybe in Pittsburgh. Kind of. Uh, fuck. Name a team, I, man. You know they're going to have them. Oh, you're going to have some people. But this this seemed to be a. The entire stadium was full of just the worst. Like, I felt like it was a jersey or something, the way that, you know, the way they act, yelling and screaming at people, you're voting for the wrong fucking team. It's like, oh, did you did you play? Are you, oh, my God, you going out there? Yeah. We won three Stanley Cups. We didn't win shit. Yeah. The, the Canadians the that are on the ice that are from <laughs> yeah. a different part of Canada than the other guys from Canada – no one's from Chicago. They're either Canadian so. or Russian, man. Yeah. They're not. Hmm. But enjoyable. Um, I'm sure we'll go to another one. It, uh, if I if I learned a little bit more, it'll be a, a little less frustrating. But, yeah, you know, seeing every every time I'd think something was going right and they'd get a save or something, it would whistle, bring it back, try it again. And I was like, oh, exciting. <laughs> Did you happen to see the fights on Saturday? Um, I went ahead and watched it afterwards, and I did not know the outcome until I clicked on it and noticed that the video was only 13 seconds long. Yeah, dude. Got real excited. And then uh, I, watched, I didn't watch any prelims, though, so all I saw was the, was the McGregor fight. Yeah. But, I mean, I didn't know if you can call it that because – Aldo Ronda Rousey the shit out of him and just put his head down and ran. I don't know what strategy that was, but I didn't see it. We were at the bar and uh I was checking I was checking the updates on UFC.com and I saw that Weidman lost his title to Luke Rockhold, just got f- fucking just got beat up real bad. And then not long afterwards, I checked to see like what would have been the outcome of like round one of the McGregor and Aldo fight, and it was already over. I was like, "What the fuck, man?" That was um, supposed to be a good fight too. 
Aldo, he, he really did. He Ronda Rousey did. Aldo, the bell goes off, and he comes out head down like he's going to put McGregor against the wall, and he throws a little feeler right. Aldo swings, and he plants him with that left so fucking hard his eyes roll back in his head, and he just dropped to the ground. And as soon as he hit the ground, it, you could see like he was out, but he also kind of knew what was happening. Like the look in his face was just terror. And then he came down with hammer fists. Connor just landed on him. I think he, he might have touched him with the second one. He hit him once hard, and Aldo wasn't responsive, and they broke it up right there. Jesus. But it was uh, – yeah, you, uh, there might be a video left on YouTube that hasn't gotten pulled. But yeah, it, it looks like they, they picked them all up <laughs> pretty good. I was yeah. trying to look for it right now. but I, I got it real quick, and it they they had, like, the replay on um, – ESPN and stuff. I think if you if you really want to kick around, but yeah, I got to watch it that night and it. Holy crap, man! He just he came out just. I mean, looked like he was gonna bulldoze him, and Connor could not have been less phased. He just leaned back. He's taller than him, so the reach just wasn't there for Aldo. And so two or three whiffs, and then plants that left. He even he gets up, and of course Connor's his usual self and. He goes, no one can withstand my left. It did. It hit him. It hit him right in the cheekbone, like right above the jawline. Just fucked his day up. God, dude. He just just folded. His eyes go back in his head, and he hit the ground. And that was it. God. All that smack, too. Every bit that Connor talked. Dude, he, he, he... backed it up he got a good fucking hand on connor too he only hit him once and he he's bleeding i mean that's pretty fucking solid because connor he's hitting him but if you watch he's hitting him as he's moving backwards yeah so he's not you you know how it is like if if Mm -hmm. you're running into a punch it's going to end you and that's what it was is connor's moving backwards and then he kind of plants and then throws that left and aldo's just coming into it that's intense. That's cool, though. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> um, Connor's apparently going to move up to – they were talking about today. He's going to move up to 155, and, like, his first fight will be a title fight for 155. Is that lightweight? Yeah, he's feather right now. Okay. Oh, man. Well, there we go. What have we, we just talked about sports for – fucking 13 minutes that's a new one gotta love it yeah Yeah. well it's because science was filled with uh hogwash Hogwash. i I had nothing really Uh, there was a anything good uh, mr matthew hodges posted um that hyperloop thing on on the facebook page and it was a i guess elon musk had written a 57 page paper about a suggestion Hmm. How, how do I phrase this without sounding like a fucking retard? Um, it was like his plan to make a high-speed train that would essentially work like the tubes that they used to have at the bank, like those air tubes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Um, so, like Futurama. Yeah. We- yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it would be. I mean, it would have a car instead. Like it'd be like a train car that they use through an air tube, but um. The guys who took the... He's like, I'm too busy, so somebody else should do this. Here's a 57-page paper about how it should get done. So a group of guys from a company... I don't know if the name of the company is Hyperloop or if that's just the name of the... um, Not the technology, but the train. But his design, yeah. But I guess they're going to use magnets. And as the train travels down the tracks it's going to each magnet's going to trigger and then push it a little bit further and it's just essentially going to it's going to glide instead of being under constant propulsion it's just as it oh, passes sweet. the magnets, I think we lost it's complete push connection it further and further but it hauls ass like they're there's i think they're testing it next month in Las Vegas and their anticipated speed is going to be 0 to 336 miles per hour in 2 seconds. So fucking <laughs> it screams. How are you going to be how are you going to handle that? They're not it's not going to move that fast. 
when like people are on it and what they were testing it on was just like um like a shuttle it wasn't even the car that the people would be on it was just like a um essentially just like a flat train car almost just like an empty blank car with oh i saw that yeah 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 so that was it i mean that's all i saw about about space not gonna lie though i didn't really look but uh i mean i guess star wars comes out on friday yeah um i had to go off video here because internet's getting a little janky oh right on so i'm trying to keep the audio nice and clean but um yeah star wars comes out this friday did you hear about the guy that bought out the entire movie theater what no there's a guy that was like i don't want this ruined like i don't want my experience ruined so he went and he spent like twenty eight hundred dollars and purchased every seat in the movie theater just so he can sit in peace and watch it you know i was talking to i was talking to melissa about that i was like dude i want to go on opening weekend and i explained that i don't i don't want to go i don't want to go see star wars when it's like going to see rocky horror picture show the week of halloween like i don't want to go when people are throwing popcorn at the fucking screen and singing right. along and all that fucking dumb shit. I want to go when it's Hooting silent. And hollering every time you yeah. see someone. I don't want to go when there's 27 stormtroopers running around. There's a cookie monster, Darth Vader. I, I just don't want that. I just want to go nope. when it's a fucking movie. I don't want to go uh, to Comic-Con. I have to turn off my phone. I have to not get on the internet for a week. Oh, for so sure. So I can not get any spoilers and then go see it in peace. Or I have to figure out how to get on that. If that Netflix Canada thing is true, then I'm going to get on there and watch it in my living room with a bottle of Jack the way it should be enjoyed. <laughs> the way I enjoyed it when yeah, I was I guess, five. Uh, I guess George Lucas Fist saw the Jack movie Daniels and, not a care and in the world. George Lucas said that it's what mm. the fans have wanted. So it didn't <laughs> sound like he was very impressed with it, but he thinks that people are going to like it, which makes a whole lot more sense to me than him liking it and none, no one else liking it. For instance, episode one, two, and three. But Right. I don't even know if he liked those. He might have just been drunk the whole time. I don't get it. <laughs> um, well, I got... Uh, you know what I did? This is what I did while I tried to get on the internet to find the crazy things. I have every time I've gone on to start finding news stories, I come across this guy on YouTube who has a, a channel called Dark Five. I don't know if you've ever seen these, but he does a five countdown of the weirdest whatever, the weirdest photos ever found or the weirdest dark web secrets. And I'm addicted. I watch like 20 of them in a row. <laughs> are they good? I can't stop. They, they're pretty good. A lot of them are – it's just crap that he found on the Internet, which is – like basically all we do so right good for him yeah but it's yeah it's just uh creepy music and then they'll have the, the, like i said the, the good ones that i've really found are like he has bad ones like the the five um mysterious photos of mars i watched today wasn't that good they're just rocks you know, blurry photos that people swear alien probes or whatever yeah but the 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 really good one was the top the countdown of the top five darkest things on the deep web. Yeah. And that's the one you'll watch that and go, I'm never getting on the dark web. Ooh. I'm not gonna do it. Like the, the, he talks about the he was the guy that I think I told you where I'd seen Oh, we watched that fucking guy murder <laughs> that person? Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that was on there. So Anyways, nope, that's uh, not my shit, man. I don't fuck solid <laughs> I don't. promo for this guy. Dark Five has just ruined my life for a while now. No, no way, Jose. I mean, a lot of them are good. You can get like the top five best unicorn photos or whatever. I don't know if he he might do top five credit cards to have. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I do the weird shit, so I see all the weird stuff. I'm, I'm assuming with a name like Dark Five, it's probably all weird shit. Probably but. generally, mostly 100% <laughs> dark. Uh, I like it, though. Hey, um, man, so fuck science this week. I got nothing for you. 
I got no love for you, science. I I, I tried to read mm, an expose, I guess. I don't know what to really call it. It was a, a write up, but it wasn't by the people that did the research. So oh, eh, it was it was a little fiction. secondhand. <laughs> no, it was um, someone trying to explain something in layman's terms. Like there's a group doing something, but they're not writing about it. So this guy wrote about it, and I don't know. I'm going to wait for more information to come out. But um, the the reason I stopped reading it was it's about computers being quantum computers being able to use um, time like loops, which are in uh, the theory of relativity allows for a closed time like loop, which is how. Some people believe time travel will happen. You you could section off an area of time and then like kind of loop through it. And it was that that book that I was reading, uh, the quantum physics for dummies deal. Yeah. That equated it to being able to to jump from the front of the train to the back of the train and then experience that same instance again. And they're trying to use quantum computing, and I think it's a theoretical paper, but this guy makes it sound like they're trying to actually do it. But that isn't possible now because if, if it was possible, then you've created time travel. And I think that would have probably made CNN or something. I, I feel like it would have. <laughs> yeah. um, that's why I kind of got out of it because I think this guy took a little bit of research and, and was like, they made time travel. And then he wrote this piece on it. But I believe their theory is that they could make a time like loop, time like loop. And then start a process that could not be figured out by a computer, send it in this loop, and it would literally have all of that time to process it, but it would happen instantly to you. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, and I, I, that's why I really want to dive into it, because that, that's a cool-sounding, um, almost a sci-fi deal, if you think about it right now. But if you could say, ah, I really have to get these calculations done, but this processor will take 10 years to figure out the calculation. I know. I'll just load it in this computer, shoot it back 10 years with a code that only I can break. And that way no one in the past will open it. And then it will just run its calculation for all 10 of those years. And then I can open it today. So I'll hit enter and then a message would pop up with the answer to that calculation. <laughs> That'd be a fucking trip, man. Yeah. And I think it's their way of getting around processor speeds and trying to get smaller or bigger, whatever you have to do to get faster processing. These guys were like, well, we could just use time. You know, with the with the quantum computing thing, like uh, D-Wave, uh, your buddy posted another thing on D-Wave, and I went back and read it, and it turns out it was just a, a copy of the articles yeah. that, um, that I had found mm -hmm. uh, a little ways back. So. It, they're starting to get a little bit of traction in the public eye, which is nice. But, yeah, that was all on the, the same stuff from before. Um, I'm interested to see if they can <clears> – <throat> if we start seeing more of them now because it's about time for another update from old D-Wave. But that – uh, cool. if be cool to hear more about it. Yeah, that's kind of their deal, though. You could use a D-Wave computer to create this time-like loop, and then you could – kick the calculations back however many years you would need to that way you could get the answer immediately that's a that's a interesting thought process yeah fuck yeah it is <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking nutty so i'll try to uh i'll try to get more on that to to bring to light um speaking of do you remember what we were supposed to oh the daggummit I remembered something we didn't look up. Uh, I, I could not remember it before we started the podcast, but I was supposed to come up with all of the information for the new Dreamcast. Oh, the one with like the U.S. or the Dreamcast yeah. two or whatever. Or yeah, the it's. I think it plays all the old Dreamcast games. I don't think they're making new games for it, who's, are they? Is it who's making it though? It's not a Sega thing, is it? Oh, it, I don't. Are they still around? Well, I mean, they make games. Kind of. Well, yeah, I, I didn't say they make good games, but. <laughs> Dreamcast 2. Hmm. Do you got anything concrete on it? No, I'm just looking one? at pictures and shit. God, I 
got to find it. I apologize, everybody, because I said I was going to look that up, and then I, cu- I couldn't remember. And, I mean, it's not like there's an audio file that I could go back to to listen to hear what I was saying. I mean, that's impossible. Right. <laughs> recording a podcast. It makes, makes remembering things a real motherfucker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Apologize. But there was a little bit of – did you hear about the controversy at the Game Awards? That was, what was it, a weekend ago? For the Metal Gear guy? Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly it. Uh, Hideo Kojima. Yeah, Kojima. That's, uh, he worked there from, he worked there uh, as long as we've been alive. His, 1986 isn't Metal to 2015. Gear, his fucking, that's yep. his, his baby, isn't it? His name is on every game. Yeah. I mean, it's everybody like, knows, everybody who ever played video games once knows who Kojima is. Yeah, or at least knows the name. And he uh, he packed it up and left. I did a little digging in that because I wanted to know, you know, why that happened. The, the reason I know it is the guy's speech at the Game Awards where he went off the rails and was like, "The lawyers won't let him come, and it's a tragedy." And yeah, you should. Ex- I mean, you pretty much did just explain it, but but that was one of the uh, guys that did like the voiceovers or something, right? It wasn't Kiefer Sutherland. It was. It was the guy who, fuck, who was it? I'll let you do a little Google search right there. Um, but his speech was was pretty good. It, he basically, you can tell it was ad libbed. Everyone swore they had no idea he was going to do it. He got up and just said that he couldn't believe that they had parted ways, and he just could not fathom why they would prevent him from coming to receive awards with his peers over a game series that he has built. And that was a, uh, and I guess now he's banned from going back because he did this. he was the host. Yeah, he was the host, but I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, Jeff Kiley. There you go. K-E-I-G-H-L-E-Y. And he, yeah, he got up there and, and was going to announce the next group of candidates or whatever and then decided to, Ad lib, uh, Kojima huh. speech, <laughs> which is pretty cool. If you haven't heard it, go on and uh, look that up because it's it kind of shows the magnitude that this guy had because they were willing to get banned from ever doing this again. What did that just guy, to get this word out? What did that guy do in the past? Man, fuck! Should have looked into this. I did not <laughs> know that this was going to come up. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, the. Uh, I, anyways, doing a, doing a little research on this, I came across uh, a couple of real, uh, a couple of crazy facts. Like Metal Gear Solid Five raised a hundred and seventy nine million dollars in the Jeff first Kiley's day of launch. Jeff a Canadian video game journalist. And to put and that presenter. in perspective, that's more than Avengers: Age of Ultron made, and it's more than Jurassic World made. Holy shit! Metal Gear. Metal Gear Solid Five. Damn. Yeah, hundred hundred and seventy nine million in one day. So that was, and that's this guy's baby. Like the, he made this. Apparently, the company decided in two thousand seven to start pushing the majority of their resources into mobile development. And Kojima started having panic attacks about it. Like he, and then I guess after Metal Gear Solid Five was done, they really were like, okay, well that was your last one. Like you need to start making iPad apps. What? Dude, yeah, come on. <clears throat> come on. So, it's such bullshit because they probably want a game out once every fucking three months instead of a game out once every six years. He And he said that he didn't have a problem with people that made mobile games, but he could not confine himself to the parameters that mobile games restrict you to. So he, you know, it's a very finite amount of resources you have to work with. Yeah, for sure. And and he he wouldn't do it. So um, eventually they came to an impasse. He postponed the release of Metal Gear Solid Five several times because um, guys, uh, somebody they wouldn't release their name, but they said they were they were close in the organization. Uh, said that he wasn't postponing it for the reasons that they were putting out in the media. Like, he was just obsessing over the game 
to make it perfect. He wanted it absolutely cinematic perfect because it would probably be the last time that he worked on one. Oh, that's stupid. That's so fucking stupid. Mobile gaming yeah. isn't gaming. Quit pl- quit, quit playing make-believe, you fucks. <clears throat> and it's making people so much money from in-game transactions. I mean, look how much people made off of Candy Crush, and that game made... I mean, it couldn't have cost a million dollars to make. No, no couldn't way. It couldn't have cost uh, 100000 It was probably five people. Probably. And so the, this Clash company of clans. believes... Yeah, that they can pump out tons of games like that and make the profit margin on that like metal gear solid 5 cost 85 million dollars to make yeah not not in um advertisements or anything but just the production of of the video game Mm -hmm. now true they made a hundred million dollars more than that in the first day but if you create a game in four months for two hundred thousand dollars and it makes a million dollars a month yeah just you know, some it, microtransactions. It just, yeah, it just blows it yeah, out. Yeah, the money's there, unfortunately. Unfortunately, so. there's a lot of people out there with their parents' credit cards that are just dumping fucking money into these bullshit microtransaction-driven games. Yeah, getting iTunes gift cards for Christmas because they're going to The gonna shitty thing is, it is it's ruining real gaming. Like, for those of us <clears> who <throat> enjoy actual games, it's it's fucking it up for us. Uh, yeah, look at this. Now, one of the greatest game developers of all time is no longer going to make games, at least there. I'm sure he'll get picked up somewhere else. But seeing that Kojima name at the loading screen of Metal Gear Solid is no longer. Yeah. Well, maybe. They might own, owe him royalties for... Uh, I guess they don't. There was a, a part of this article said that they've already removed his name from art development and something else really yeah so now if you go and look it up it, he won't be on anything else god damn ain't that some shit yeah pretty crazy well put him on a halo game maybe you can make a halo game that isn't a pile of fucking shit excuse whoa, my language whoa, whoa. halo <laughs> 5 fuck halo man was a pile of shit <laughs> <laughs> I, I i bought an xbox one the same reason why i bought an xbox 360 which was to play halo yeah that was the only reason. And then I previewed the game and I I didn't buy it. <laughs> like I just I just didn't get it. And now like I it's hmm, a, that's yeah. sad. It's the, I'm the a gameplay true Halo just fan isn't there for me. The the floating I, I, I bought just don't like Star Halo. Wars Battlefront because it looked like a better game. And that game <clears throat> I said a lot of good things about it. The more I play it, the more I find it to be a pile of fun. <laughs> so, I keep going back to, like, I guess that's my deal. It's like going back to games is how I justify how good they are. And at first, Battlefield or um, Star Wars Battlefront was a lot of fun. Yeah. And then I played it less and less and less, and now I don't play it at all. I continually go back and play Metal Gear Solid Five. I continually go back and, and play Just Cause 3. I was just going to say, I saw I saw a video today of some guy. I don't know, I don't know like, what context this was happening in. I don't know what the fucking things are called either. But you're, the main character, like Rico or whatever, is that right? Right, Rico. He's yeah. walking behind what looks like an armed guard. And he puts three or four of these little rocket booster things on this guy's <laughs> ass. <laughs> And then he sets them off, and the guy just, like, flies around the fucking map. <laughs> and the caption for the video was, I could show you the world. And it was pretty <laughs> fucking... F- I almost, had I not been laying in bed, I would. I was going to walk over and fucking download it on Steam right then. It's, it, it's so much fun to play. It's ridiculous. It, every bit of that is why that game is fun. <laughs> you, can, you can add rocket boosters to anything. Like, you, you're, the whole idea is to create these link chain events that blow up like a guard post well you could strap a propane tank with those rocket boosters and shoot those rocket boosters into two giant fuel tanks that you have tethered over to a building and as soon as they hit you start pulling the tethers in and then they fall over and you can blow up the whole base in one or two moves (laughs) and create i mean the the explosions look fantastic yeah i watched i watched one oh, of so good looking a porta potty flying around a base just <laughs> yeah, blowing the shit out of everything and it looked it looked great <laughs> it looks like fucking fun man it is uh and 
but you just got to get past the fact that there are no real physics in the game. None of it's going to make any sense. Like it, what it would never fly like that. Mm, just cause, just cause. That's why it goes like that. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, speaking of favorite games, uh, Rocket League's got that hockey thing out right now. Did you see that? Uh uh-uh. uh What is that about? All right. So if you go in and you play certain matches, you have the chance to unlock a hockey mode, and then I guess if you unlock it, the next time you, the next round, will be on an ice rink with a giant hockey puck. Oh, my God. Oh, I know. we got to get back on that, yeah. uh, like, tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah. And see if we can play a little hockey, because it, it looked – you can watch a little video of it online, and it's it's pretty funny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were playing it – oh, we were real drunk uh, Friday night. Devin and I were playing it, and it was just miraculous win after miraculous win. It was pretty – it was a good night. <laughs> I know we played uh, on Friday night. Did we play Friday night? Yeah, we played ranked matches and won. Yeah, a bunch. And then we lost to the two guys that yeah. didn't have their third player. Yeah, we lost. Yeah, when it was two to three. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. After we had just smoked everybody. Yeah, we just went on like a seven game win streak and then. In ranked matches, too. Right. <laughs> We're the best. <laughs> unless you unless you put us at a handicap and then and we just completely lose. <laughs> so uh now that I'm less employed than I was before, I've started looking into MMOs again, like MMORPGs to maybe in hopes find something that looks mildly promising. Yeah, you should probably do that instead of finding a job. That's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> but dude it's it's fucking shit's not looking up man mike and i got beta access for a game called black desert starting on wednesday so that'll be cool next week and i'll have something to talk about i'll stream it on stream it on twitch also but uh was playing this game called davillion and it's like it's from the makers of terra and it's essential it's a it's an isometric view game like Diablo and it plays it plays a lot like Diablo. Same like click through questing, don't really have to pay attention to the story or anything like like MMOs, but I don't know. It's just cheap. I hit level five before I even realized I hit level two. Like the progress in it is it I don't know. They You're gonna you're gonna be max capped and and oh, a couple everybody days already is. Yeah, everybody yeah. already is. I'm 23, and I think I've put four hours into it. Oh, my God. So, yeah. Yeah, it's that, man. I saw Terra has a new has a new class out called a Brawler, and that looks kind of neat. It's this chick with these, like, giant fucking robot hands, and she just punches the shit out of everything. But... I was looking at a little review play of uh, what is it, Xeno? Xeno Gears? Uh, no, Xeno Blade. Oh, right? Xeno Blade, yeah, yeah. Uh, the new Xeno Blade, and I guess it got just drugged through the coals by Game Informer. Really? And a lot of people, you know, tried to defend it or whatever, but the f- the thing that um. The thing that got me, where I was like, "Nope, I'll never play that game," is he played the music that they, and you know, they they regionalize games when they come to America, mm-hmm. and they've been mm-hmm. like, "This game's been in Japan for almost a year, and it just released here in America." Yeah, and the music was like some really bad rapping. I guess it's like this. You have to listen to it. It's it's like a, a, a shitty rap song that plays with house music in a loop and it happens every time you battle oh the no. exact same oh yeah so oh <laughs> no <just> this... <laughs> that's terrible <laughs> yeah and he said the other thing is uh the girl the, one of the creatures that you hang out with they have this joke where um she's going to eat him like she's like i'm gonna cook you up and eat you and every interaction has that joke in it. 
in warm one form or another. So no matter what, the, all your friends are dying, you're in like peril, and then she'll go. But we could always cook you up and eat you. Uh, what? <laughs> what? Uh, so it. He just said that none of the good traits of the game could overwhelm the fact that you had to put. He put a hundred and eight or so hours in for the review, and he, he you just can't get over it. You just can't get past. Those things. He said the Jesus. grind was ridiculous. It would take, I mean, just tens of hours. Like it would take you 12 hours to get through something to move on to the next section. And he he's like, it's just too much. And he goes, the only saving grace was halfway through the game. At about 55 hours in, you get a mech. You get this mecha. And then you can run around in him. And I don't know why it's so late in the game that you get it, but... That doesn't sound like fun at all, as it turns out. Nah, no. He uh, and People were like, man, you were excited for this game. He's like, I wanted it to work. I was very excited. I really wanted it to work. I think that was just... one of those... There was like a... I wish I knew more about it, so I'm not just saying a bunch of dumb shit, but there were... There's a group of titles that people were trying to push for in the U.S. for them to bring over from Japan. And, like, a shit ton of people signed this request thing. And the company was like, okay, cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll, bring, we'll bring these games over. And I think that was one of them. It might have been because it, it did release quite a while ago in Japan. And I don't know if it got good reviews or what. I mean, Z Xenoblade Chronicles was a decent game. Xenoblade is a good series, but... Yeah, it got um, Metacritic reviews are good. It's got an eighty four for the new one. Yeah, that's funny. I I haven't played it. I will not play it because of that that loop he played. And <laughs> you should have heard him. He goes, uh, the other guy goes. The, it plays every time you fight. He just goes. It plays every time. <laughs> Was it the Game Informer <laughs> like test chamber yeah, or some shit? Yeah, God damn it! I gotta watch it after this. Podcast. I it's, fucking it's really I good. was excited because I thought maybe. I saw a glimpse of it. I was like, "Oh shit, a Wii U game that might be worth playing." But if it's if it's bad, then it's fucking bad, man. <laughs> I'm not gonna. No, you'll you'll have to oh, check yeah, it out. It uh, cool. The uh, I love those guys. That fucking their podcast is one of my favorites. Yeah, they're real good. Tim Turry cracks me up. That dude's sense of humor uh, is fucking hilarious. No, mine is. Uh... God, what's his name that has the the no Dan, the monotone Dan Tack. Dan yeah Dan Tack yeah, Dan Tack's yeah my no favorite. facial expression no fucking no emotion <laughs> in his voice yeah he's good oh it's so good <laughs> not to just ride all over somebody else's ah whatever go go check him out at gameinformer dot com yeah <laughs> fuck yeah man do it yeah they're uh, it's real fun I like I like listeners um. Anyways, other than that, uh, gaming-wise, I've been stuck into um, Just Cause 3 still. I haven't haven't been able to crawl out of that hole. How are you digging it? I love it. I, I can't. It starts to get repetitive, so I shut it down and I play Rocket League or I go play something else for a day. Yeah. But it, let, let 48 hours pass where I haven't played that game and I'm dying to get back in it. Even if I can only play – that's a game – that if you have 10 minutes to spare before you got to walk out the door, you can turn it on and have fun. If you can just do whatever you want for those 10 minutes. So I like that game for my little in-between. That's like, pretty fucking cool. That's hard to find. Uh, it is. It really is. Because like Metal Gear, you, a mission is going to take you like an hour. It's going to take you a while. Yeah. And you so don't know what you're getting quest. into either. Like yeah, it could no be clue. 10 minutes and it could be an hour and 10 minutes. Yeah. Um. So minus a sports style game, like unless I get on and play a match of Rocket League, um, or a round of Dirty Bomb or something like that, like those you could do, but to just have like a non-set match, like I can jump in this world and I could go fly an airplane or a helicopter or I could blow up a tanker or I could connect five boats together and get them at top speed and then slam them all together with cables and watch them explode. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. And you can do that for 10 minutes and I get my little dopamine fix and then I can walk out the door. 
So, <laughs> hell yeah, I'm I'm still real excited about the game. That's right. The storyline is dog shit though. <laughs> so, <laughs> you get, it's just not there. He like pops on. He's like, "Hey Rico, you got to come talk to me because they're you're supposed to like that's <laughs> <Supposed> basically." <laughs> He's, I got something for you. And you show up and he's like, your friends are over there dying. And you're like, what? Why didn't you just say that? And he's like, I don't know. And you can <laughs> go over and <laughs> you go do the mission. So, but you got to look past that. It's, it's made kind of cheesy to help lessen, you know, the people, the interactions, individual interactions between Rico and his best friend, Mario are, um, they're good. So, I mean, you feel like they're friends, that works. And then the lady that helps him, the doctor, she's very cold and doesn't have really any emotions about anything. And, and she's enjoyable. The guy that gives you, like, your equipment, the guy you buy that shit from, yeah. his character's just like, I'm an American cowboy. <laughs> <That's so bad. laughs> and then all the filler characters are, you know, they're more or less just fillers. Yeah. Just so, you, just so you're not running around blowing stuff up. And you can. I mean, you can just ignore them. They'll just bug you every now and then, but you don't have to listen to them. For sure. Oh, but what I did find the other day, I forgot. I got excited about this. I'm just trying to break my records for the longest time in a wingsuit. So I'm up at, it's like, I forgot how many minutes. It was eight minutes or so I'd been flying around in a wingsuit just grappling from one thing to the next. And I whacked into a tree, and it knocked me out. And I was like, God damn it, because the top place guy had like nine minutes. Yeah. So I'm number two now or whatever. And I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> so I f <laughs> fell to the ground, and I landed on a pile of trash over a missile silo. And then there was a wall with four buttons on the wall. That was it. There's nobody around it. There's no guards. There's nothing. It's just at the top of a mountain. So you have to keep hitting these buttons until you find the right pattern. It turns out. Yeah. Um, only two of these have been broken. Two or three of these have been broken so far on Reddit. And um, so I figure out the code. Finally, I've been hitting these buttons forever. And it's like 43421 was the code. And I, I hit it. And when you get it, the silo opens. And it's a wormhole. What? And you just <laughs> jump into it. And you go, like, teleport through this crazy wormhole. And it just puts you on the other side of the map somewhere does it stay open is it like a a fast you can, teleport you can that use you can use again, over yeah. and over again right you just got to hit the code in. oh okay so now that you're on the other side you can use that one to get to the other one well, anyways i think they found four of them so far they're they're all over the place how and how small i are found the buttons? <laughs> like little just like little like finger buttons no they're like uh like a big red button on the wall like an emergency stop oh button. okay like like and fucking like four inches in diameter or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like like you'd punch it with your fist, and there's um, four of them on like a little wall with just two little lights at the ends. That's it. And when you hit them, they just go click. They don't no other noise. So you click, 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 and nothing happens. And you gotta keep doing it until you find the code, <laughs> or or like the two that are already done. Well, now three are done or whatever. Uh, you go on Reddit and and pull them, and then you can. You know, four, three, four, two, one, and then and it'll open. You jump in it. <laughs> so awesome. I found that that was cool. I also stumbled across uh, the banana stand from it's like Arrested Development. Saul. Oh yeah, Arrested Development. <laughs> yeah, yeah the there's always money stand. in the banana stand, Brad. Yeah, so they have those in there. <laughs> That's fucking funny. <laughs> there's a ton of Easter eggs throughout the game. So now, oh, I'm, now I'm there's a with finding those Final Fantasy Seven. Isn't Cloud Sword stuck in a mountain or some shit somewhere in the game? Oh, I don't know this one. I thought I saw. Oh, sorry, spoiler alert. I thought I saw that. No, I, I'm after him. I'm I'm now just just cruising around looking for those crap because there's so much fun to find. Easter eggs. In yeah, there's Japan. there is uh, just tons and tons of Easter eggs in the game, which keep you. I mean, that's better than a storyline sometimes to me is. Just the hunt to find all of these little, just the little, little ridiculous yeah, little shit. Crazy. Oh, I loved it in Halo, man. When you could get the uh, the skulls, and then the skulls would unlock like um, what was one of them was the party one. So anytime you got a headshot, it would 
pop a balloon and confetti would fly in the air. <laughs> That's awesome. And then <laughs> you could turn on like the extreme legendary mode by getting certain ones and uh, it was I like that. And this is giving me the same same satisfaction. That's cool. Yeah, I guess uh shoved in a in a cliffside somewhere in the game, cloud sword stuck in a rock. That's awesome. I, I like that these guys went to the time just to throw that little bit of code in there for the banana stand and the, the, the random teleports. I guess you'd never use them. Are they? Oh, like they're for not like part a of mission the game or anything? It's just... Right, yeah, they'll never be a thing because you can fast travel in the game. Oh, okay. Well, then, So yeah. it's just for, it's just for fun. It's do, Would you like to end up on the other side of the world? <laughs> just <laughs> jump in there and it, bam. Oh, okay, now I'm here. So... That's fucking neat. Yeah, there's. I'm. Uh, I'll keep reporting on the on the different little things I find, but that's it so far. And I'm mm, I'm hooked with it. Oh yeah. Uh, hooked with it. Rocket League. Played a little bit of uh, Dirty Bomb the other day, and that was still fun. Man, so, I don't know if it was last week or if you and I talked about it on the phone, or if maybe we didn't. But I uh, could not get competitive matchmaking to go. Oh, it's done. I don't know what happened to it, but I cannot get on. Like, I sat for probably 15 minutes before I just closed it. Yeah, if I, if I do get it to go, it's always very long wait, and then the match is, like, the maxed out for region and skill level. I don't know what the deal is with it. Yeah, um, Chris, Chris and I got on one night we just decided to try it and we waited seven minutes and it finally worked but that was a that was the fastest that it's ever loaded for me as yeah, of I don't recently know what's going on. i mean when you and i were at we're in ohio and we were playing it we were queuing up almost immediately yeah i don't know if it has something to do with uh, with the new gameplay that came out and everybody's just playing that i guess i mean maybe or maybe people just moved on and then the beta's dying off i don't i don't know but there's a shit ton of people playing oh i guess i can't say a shit ton it seems like there's a lot of people playing um quick match yeah that new one uh, i went to i played the other games like um like stopwatch would be for competitive but they got it in quick match and it was a lot of brand new level guys. So I'm wondering if ever everybody like when I play the the one where you kill people and then um, the match is either if you eliminate everyone or you plant the bomb. Yeah, like Counter Strike style. Right, and uh, extermination. That match will have yeah extermination. That match will have guys that are level thirty, and you know like a lot of high level guys in that matchmaking yeah so I, I just don't think they're playing that competitive anymore that's shitty because i don't know they've got to the next update really needs to focus on bringing more modes to competitive play because it only has stopwatch yeah i agree i i just don't understand what the fucking hype is behind extermination if that is the case it's it it how long has Counter Strike been around for? Like it's it's gotten a little old, but I think that's what it is. So people, this is people's way of saying, "Well, I don't play Counter Strike anymore," and then they just play Counter. They secretly loved it this whole time. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I I love the shit out of that game, but I just wish it would. I wish that I'm hoping that the next update will be a competitive game change because I like playing competitive. You don't deal with, for some reason, people don't shit talk as much in competitive. People have been bitching about hackers on competitive because I was look, when I was looking through the forums, and I mean, I guess, I guess there was that one game that we were playing where the that healer chick was running around headshotting everybody with her healer gun, right? And that was fucking. I don't know if that was a bug or if that was a hack though, but yeah, I don't know, but it, yeah, it was as powerful as a sniper rifle or a shotgun. <laughs> And it, or more so, and she was just pew pew, and everybody just dead, dead, yeah. dead, dead. Everything was a headshot. Yeah, yeah, that was 
that was bad. But hmm. I don't know. I hope that I mean they run that. What is it? NRS, any NGS or some shit. Yeah, NGS. I've never that's fucking NGS heard of it though, so I don't know. Nah, might not be where it good. comes from. Well, hopefully they get all the bugs worked out. I I'm ready for that game to go full live, and have a lot more game modes and maybe some new people. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I got a new character the other day. Yeah, it'll um, be. I got the guy with the flashbang and the the M60. This, yeah, Thunder, is that who you're talking about? Thunder, yeah, I got Thunder he the other day. He's a motherfucker, man. Yep, yeah. He's kind of kill, kind of killing some people. Really hate him. <laughs> <laughs> um, the weird thing is his upgrades. I have two bronze cards for him, uh-huh. and that changes his gun. Well, he's only really good with that m60 oh yeah like his deal is that you flashbang a bunch of people and then you just lay a whole belt of bullets down range yeah well you can get like a little assault rifle but i mean does hmm. that kind of make him less not near as useful yeah not not really i mean then he's just a, he's just like everybody else he just has a flashbang like, if you give him another weapon, he just reminds me of Fragger, but with a flashback. Gotcha. Dude, well, having to deal so with... So I went back to using him at the at the bottom level. Fucking Nader is probably my least favorite fucking character in that game. The chick with the grenade launcher drives me <laughs> Oh, yeah. Absolutely that insane. strapped to her back. Yeah. Then when she, she has that card that when she dies, it launches one final. Yeah. It put I get killed by that all the time. All the fucking time. It's that same bullshit from Call of Duty, man. Back in the yep, day. I run up and stab her, and then they go down, and I'm like, yay, and then pow. Yeah, martyrdom. <laughs> God <damn it>. Fucking <laughs> awesome. <sighs> so shitty. <laughs> but uh, other than that, nothing to do. What was the, what's that game you gifted to me on Steam? Lethal League? Lethal League. Yeah, I, gotta... I, haven't, even, yeah, I haven't even watched you, a video for it. <laughs> you just sent it yeah, to me. Yeah, for... it got killer reviews. Yeah, well, uh, I used to rely heavily on reviews, and then they bad mouth my Just Cause three. So, I, dude, it got good reviews on Metacritic. I don't know where you look at reviews at, but it's obviously the it, wrong place. No, on uh, on Steam, it got mixed reviews on oh, Steam. Oh, because people have AMDs, right? And yeah, because they have AMDs, yeah. and and it's all glitchy. Well, don't. But I bought a potato, and it won't work. Don't buy that. Don't buy that video card then. Yeah. Spent some real money. Dude. Dude, bro. Get, uh, they are cheaper, I guess, but not that much. Like, especially when you can get a GTX 970 now um, with the super overclocked crap and running wide open from EVGA for $370. It's really not that. Or it might be cheaper now. <laughs> Three forty something. All right. So this Lethal League is a four person free for all game. And there's one ball and everybody oh. has one guy has like a ping pong paddle, the other chick has a hammer or something. <laughs> Another kid has like a baseball bat. <laughs> and you're just trying to hit each other with the ball. Well, and the arena well, is super you. fucking tiny. And I lost you for a minute there. You said the chick has a ping pong paddle. Yes. And then you cut it. Oh, shit. Yeah, some guy's got a ping pong paddle. Another guy's got a bat. And then, like, the more you hit the ball, the faster it gets moving. And you're just trying to hit each other with a ball. Mm, sounds sounds amazing. It looks retarded. <laughs> it looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you told me Rocket League looked retarded. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Oh, shit, man. Well, uh, I am going to say that we should pack it up on this one because I've got to be on the water at 6 in the morning. Damn, dude. Yeah, it sounds good, Pretty man. Pretty horrible. Uh, I'll be back home tomorrow night so we can get on to play some games. And you people out in the wonderful interwebs can uh, always get on with us and play as well. Yeah, yeah. Pooh Man on Steam, p 0 0 m Four M, give me a shout. <laughs> you just fucked that all up. Poom, you just spelled poom four. P zero zero M four N. What? No, you got it. That's it. All right.
<laughs> boom, boom, poor. Poo man. And uh, I don't know. I got like two. I got what? Delta Mech 1 and uh, yeah, you can Myrick 1987. Two. G- Google it. Whichever one, they'll pop up. <laughs> um, but we love you. Uh, have a wonderful week. Later, everybody. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you on Monday. Bye.